Well, Mr. Schmidt, when does love become harmful? That is a very good and interesting question. And I don't know if any of y'all out there have ever thought or considered it, but when does your love step over the line and become toxic? I mean, do you have these spoilt little brats running around that you see that they have no respect for anything or anyone? I mean, I do know later in life that anything that you work for off the sweat of your own brow and uh, pains of your own back, you respect more than anything that was given to you. I mean, there's some you know, exceptions to that because some people are truly grateful what they've got. But unless you work for it, it doesn't mean anything to you. So when you're giving things to people, where does that love become bad? I mean, I know you want to give you and your offsprings or people around you the best life that you can give. I think it boils down to love can create a selfishness that we don't ever think about. Like, I love you so much, I, I need to be around you and protect you. As a father, or you want to be around your, smother your kids to where they don't want to be around you, or you put them in too many uh, sports activities uh, thinking that's going to help them out out of love. You're thinking, oh, I love them so much, I want them to be active, and then they end up despising sports and despising you. Uh, Which hopefully they always despise sports, but that's another topic for another day. Yeah. Well, not to clarify just that for <laughs> real quick, is that... Uh, physical activity is fantastic. Yes, but organizational sports. Organizational sports is horrible for a lot of reasons that we could go into later. But the love, there's some fine lines there because how many people have we known and met and known well, even some in our own families, that, okay, they've been doted on so much that they, they don't respect... And not that they don't fully respect there. There is some respect for the things that they have. There's some appreciation for the things that they have. Uh, but they're willing to do things that they know is wrong or will get them in trouble because they know that there's always that safety net there. That's right. So it's toxic to them and toxic to the people that are around them. And it ultimately can become toxic to parents that love too much because, because those people are willing to, let's say, uh, take unnecessary risk, whether it's in business and uh, all sorts of things. They're willing to do something that is so unnecessary that you as the parent, the one loving and providing that safety net, you're the one who has to pay for it. Yeah. You're over love. Your love transfers and gets turned right back around you in the form of um, disrespect. Yes. And being unappreciative and you by giving over compensating love ends up turning all the way against you where you in many cases had to physically outpour capital. Like a perfect example is a lot of kids, uh, I've known this growing up, where if they were driving drunk, you know, because their daddy was the police chief or their dad was a high powered attorney or, uh, the mayor, or governor, whatever, the DA's son. I mean, I was friends with all these people that had no care whatsoever about DWIs or anything else because they knew their parents would make sure that they got out okay. Yeah, and their parents did get them out okay. Sure did. And I've seen it firsthand many, many, many times that it just happened. And yeah. it could be the detriment of the person, the parent, because they're hurting themselves and other people in a lot of cases to get their kid off. Oh, absolutely. And then what about the uh, just the, the person? I never knew anybody that got hurt in, a, in driving drunk whenever I was uh, younger. But I did know them to get pulled over and get tickets for being intoxicated. And I don't mean like the little BS point oh eight or whatever it is. I mean... They were sloppy. Yeah, people can have a couple of drinks and drive just fine. Most most of them. But whenever you're just hammered and driving, you're putting your life and the life of others at risk, and that's just horrible. So whenever they get um, they got in trouble, there was nothing. Nothing. Just slap on the wrist. That is what love does, and that's what uh, love for yourself even does. 
I love myself so much. I can't be embarrassed. I have a love for my own vanity so much. I can't be embarrassed by my offspring being seen to do this or that. Uh, I'm going to cover it up and take care of it because I love him and I love myself and my own positions. Yeah, because then again, that's that's toxic on both sides. It doesn't help the kid that's getting in trouble, and it doesn't help the parent either. Because once you give them that crutch, the kids are going to keep using it, and the parents have to keep covering it up. Yeah, there's no there's no other option. And so where do where do you draw the line? That's such a it's a difficult proposition to say. All right, at this point. I have to stop showing you so much affection. At this point, I can't be your safety net. And, you know, that is such a... <laughs> Not only is it such a, a difficult thing, but almost like anything, when you're in the moment, when you're in those situations, you can't go from here and take a step back and look at the overview. Some of those things take years, and then all the damage is already done. It's hard to be in that moment and you've got your life, the kid's life or finances, capital tied up to take a step back and say, oh, I'm going to have to cut my losses here. It is tough. It is tough. Uh, it's one thing that we want to do is to, pr to promote. And what we do do is we do do. <laughs> <laughs> what we promote is healthy, happy relationships are always pursuing a higher level of understanding and commitment to each other and our families and making each other stronger people. Sometimes we can take that to the level that is harmful and I can't distinguish, I can't honestly tell you, all right, Trey, as your boy does this and that, you probably need to back off just a hair. Who knows if that's the right, it might be the right decision for some young boys to have that. Because some, it's different. And some young boys need a, a bigger swift in the kick in their butt. Some of them don't. Some of them, uh, when they make mistakes, they need an abundance of more love to get them on the right path. And some of them just need a, a little talking to or just say, hey, I'm going to not help you out. I think, whatever. I think some of loving when you're talking about a kid is loving your kid enough to let them fail. You can't just give it to them. You can set up your love and give them a set path to do something. But if they fail, you've got to love them enough to let them learn from themselves. Like I always think of those parents that follow the kids around and they can't wait to catch them when they fall. I didn't do that. I was like, you're going to fall, so you better get used to it, buddy. I love you enough to let you fail. Because it's going to happen throughout your whole life. And you have these parents that have molly -coddled, molly coddled their kids where they can't get hurt on a playground. You got to put this down. You got to do this. And you got to have these pads and helmets and all that. That's not life. You're not preparing your kid for life. Life hurts. Life is hard. You get kicked when you're down. You don't have a helping hand most cases. I think love is a, is that is a very good description, Mr. Schmidt. I would have to say loving someone enough to let them fail and to let them learn. They cannot be handed everything. I think the worst thing ever is a participation trophy. No, for sure. Oh God, I, I mean, that's not love. That is that is absolute anti-love. Um, yeah, because you know who doesn't hand out participation trophies? Life. They sure don't. Now, this is your trophy. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to it. Have fun. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an interesting thing that I think people should consider. When is that line? Where does that line come? And maybe you hit it right on the head as it is loving people enough to let them fail where it's not destructive to you or to them. Because love, in a lot of circumstances, your love thinking you are doing the right thing and your emotions and your expressions of love can be a total detriment and harmful and hurtful to other people. Or it can be good for other people, but harmful to you. Like we just went over on our, our recap of numbers, and I brought up Machiavelli. Sometimes you have to love your city more than your own soul. So if you're loving your kids so much, and you're, you are helping them, say they're in a bad situation, but you're putting yourself in the hole 
to help out your kids, is that going to be good for you? I mean, you're now you're putting yourself at that detriment. So not only do you have to love your kids enough to let them fail and other relationships around you, but where do you draw the line on your end? Where's your moral limits? I mean, you can find the moral limits for somebody, but then you've got to also set them for yourself. Sure. Yeah, all these things work both ways, both directions. And you got to have a balance of something. Yeah, love, love is tricky. You know, love is so tricky. Yeah, I'm a fan of, and I think you can ex understand this too, I'm a big fan of traveling and comfort. When I travel, I want to be comfortable. I want to be rested when I get to the place so I can absorb it, learn it, and be a part of that culture and have a better, richer development of myself and and absorbing that area of the world. Yeah. So I want to fly first class. It's not that I want to, I just am. It's not that I just want to be in that position. It's that it allows me to be comfortable. So when I have people that I love, including you, and I think about this with my, uh, my adopted boys, is that too much of that, because I, I've worked for that. Like I, I appreciate it. I understand that that's my, my sweat, my sacrifices, my uh, things that I've done that allow me to, if I want to go travel, I want to be able to do it in a way that I'm rested and comfortable when I get there. Because going across the world takes a long time. Because you've earned it. I've earned it. Now when I do that for, let's say, my boys, and even you, I think, and I do that out of love because I want uh, people that go along with me to have a good, comfortable experience. And I think that allows, especially for my boys, now that they want to work harder for themselves, and now they travel the world and they want to do the nicer things to be comfortable. They want to be comfortable so they can have a more meaningful experience in whatever it is they're doing. Now, I think if I just showered onto them the, to the best of my ability to go do that without them earning it or without them having an appreciation of, of that, that kind of love, that kind of spoiling can also be very problematic for their development. Oh, yeah, especially because, those young boys yeah they don't see it as that they've earned it at that point they see it that that they need it that they're entitled to it and those are that's not good no it could easily you know, my boys aren't that way they don't feel like they're entitled to it but I, I know that they but there are some kids that do get to that point they do get to it and how do I define or how did or have I defined the nature of uh of that line it's a it's a tough tough way to, i don't know how do you articulate i don't know i'm not well, sure how we articulate when you taught your boys that they didn't deserve anything they had to work for it and they earned it and you earned it so that you can dote on them but it was never a thing in your household that they deserved anything no that's true nobody deserves anything and now we talk about a lot on words and they're just sounds and why they upset people. Now the word deserve upsets me. That is the worst thing you can say to me. You deserve nothing. Nothing. But uh, since we're talking about love, I, uh, there are a lot of things that love can do. Love can cause you to act irrationally. Love can. Love can I think that's almost the definition of love is when you're acting irrationally. I think love can cause you to act so emotionally that any pains that you feel out from the other one from love can cause you to just do all sorts of ridiculous things. I mean, uh, what what is it in a man and a woman or a child and the, the parents that it's okay that they know that you're loved, know that they have a, a secure place to be, no matter where Robbie is, which is your son, where he is in the world and where you are. He knows if he finds you or Ashley, his mom, he knows he's gonna be in a safe place. Yeah, that's a good, 
And that is a, that is the definition, I think, of what love, the goals of love. If, if I am in your presence, I know I'm going to be in a safe, comfortable place, the best of our ability, you know, unless the world's falling apart around us, which it almost is now. <laughs> But, not far from it. Yeah, not far from it. It doesn't appear to be that way anyway. But love, I think we should be cautious. I think with the moral compass uh, of love teaches us, uh, let's go out into the world and let's love the people that are worthy of being loved, because I don't believe some people are not worthy. And let's do the best we can not to overlove, to make our love spoil the hearts and minds of the people we do love. And in turn, we don't want that to come back onto ourselves in a negative way that destroys the whole love anyway. Yeah, I think you put it extremely well there, sir. Thanks. Cool. Tell you what, let's go, uh, let's take off right now, guys. And uh, that was a fantastic day. I hope that uh, whenever y'all are watching our recaps, <laughs> Ed, that's something. And uh, as far as love, love the best you can. Love the people you can to the to the highest and noblest ability possible without just destroying yourself.